Every now and again, there's always something that gets launched that leaves a mark in history as being one of the greats. Well, today I will be reviewing a camera that has its own cult following since the very first inception of its first model that came out back in 2011. Today I will be reviewing a camera that goes out of stock the very minute the pre-orders were actually announced. Apparently this camera has the largest number of pre-orders in camera history which is around 1 million units worldwide, with 500,000 units being sold just in China alone in the first two days it was announced. Well, I'm sure you can pretty much guess which camera I'm talking about right now since it is the buzz everywhere on the internet, and you guessed it, it is the Fuji X106. First and foremost, I have to thank Fujifilm Malaysia for loaning me this unit so early on that so many people came to me and asked me how do I get the unit so early on when everybody knows that there's literally no stock everywhere worldwide. So all I can say is I'm truly grateful that Fujifilm Malaysia has been so supportive towards this tiny little channel this whole time. Thank you so much Fujifilm Malaysia for all the support. In total, I had three to four weeks with this camera and I must say I do have quite a few things that I have to say about this camera. As always, my reviews are hardly scientific at all and they're merely me in my experiences using a product so if that does tickle your fancy then I guess this review is definitely for you at first I thought about reading the script through that I've written for this review but then again I realized there's a ton of reviews with specs and stuff like that so for this particular review I'm not going to be reading the specs and I'm just gonna go straight in and I'm just gonna talk about what I thought about the camera so I just thought it would be definitely apt that I talk about the elephant in the room which nobody can actually deny this camera is just one really good looking camera and it got me at hello actually this camera has got such a beautiful look about it and I guess the way a camera makes you feel is just as important as how good a camera is so this is one of those cameras that are just up there in terms of looks I just love how this camera looks I think in terms of camera design, Fuji just knows how to make beautiful cameras and they do understand that emotive qualities of a camera is just as important as the specs. So I have to say kudos to Fuji for doing such a great job with bringing back all the classic lines of what makes a camera gorgeous, in my opinion. Okay, now let's talk briefly about the build quality of this camera. To me, I really like how this camera feels. It's got a good weight to it, it feels very metallic and it really does feel great in the hand. It's got a good balance when you actually hold it and all the knobs and the dials feel very well made there's nothing that's really loose there's only one gripe I might like to bring up is definitely the fact that I don't really like Fuji buttons at all that's why I have actually used a custom button with this camera because I do find that the button the shutter button is kind of a bit squishy so I don't really like that feeling you know you don't really have that confidence when you're actually pressing the button and that's why I have been using a custom shutter button for quite some time now even for my X-T5 simply because I don't really have that inspiring feeling every time I click on the standard button that comes with the camera so yeah I mean I mean, it's something that is quite personal for me I prefer the button feeling a bit more higher and not too short when I'm actually pressing it well anyway it is something that's quite personal so so your opinions might vary right now since we've already talked about the build quality now I think it's probably the best time to talk about what was it really like using this camera I guess the main thing that I really love about this camera is definitely its size it is just so light and it's so easy to bring around every day you know it's one of those cameras that I don't don't really have to think twice to bring it it's just so easy to bring around and the best part about this camera is that I don't get any fuss from security guards whenever I'm snapping with this camera it just looks like a touristy camera that is probably not a serious camera so I do like the fact that this camera is so stealthy and I can really get around shooting stuff without people really noticing me so much so I think that this has to be one of the best things about this camera in my opinion I just think that this camera is just made for the streets I mean literally it is a street photographer's dream camera to me because you can just be that fly on the wall and just get your shots and just quickly go out the best thing about this camera too has to be the ibis on this camera for me the ibis was really the star of this whole camera setup because before this with the mark 5 of this camera or the 100v there was no ibis and i always felt that it was just lacking that small bit you know to make it a complete camera but with this camera the ibis really allows me to take long shutter shots and also not to forget the built-in nd filter ah i just wish every camera would 
don't have that built in. Maybe, maybe in the future they might put it in all lenses, but I just think that is so useful. You can really use that ND filter, especially when things get bright, but you still want to use a wide open, you know, aperture value. So I think it's really useful, but it is only up to four stops. So it's not a really, really strong um, ND filter, but still, it's still pretty useful. And in terms of video quality, I did find that the 6K on this particular camera is really good. Um, it's not perfect. The autofocus still does hunt a little, especially when the subjects are moving quite fast, as demonstrated here in this particular clip. I guess I would have loved to see that the focus was a little bit better, but I guess it is what it is. Anyway, here are some more POV shots of me in the city shooting some stuff. One thing I really love about this camera is also the fact that with 40.2 megapixels, you really can use a lot of cropping in your images. So that is really useful. Speaking of which, this camera does come with a digital crop mode, which effectively does make this lens into a 50 millimeter and a 70 millimeter lens. It is at a cost of you dropping in your resolution. So it is what it is as well, I guess. So if you do want to use it, then I guess it is quite useful. Anyway, I hope you guys don't mind me indulging a little bit more. Here are some more shots, which I didn't get with POV. So I hope you guys like some of the shots. Oh, just as a side note, I mostly do my editing myself, so I don't really use the inbuilt film simulations that much. But when I do shoot, I do mostly shoot in Provia. So yeah, I hope that information does help you guys a bit. Oh yes, before I forget, I know I haven't mentioned anything about the optical viewfinder of the OVF. Basically, I do like the OVF quite a bit because it's really nice, but you do have to watch out whenever you do use it because I did have tendencies of me not actually opening the lens because the optical viewfinder is not obstructed by anything at all. So if you do shoot with the optical viewfinder, make sure you do take off the lens cover. And here's some more sample videos that I did shoot with this camera. I'm so sorry, they are not going to be any epic videos at all, but it's just me in my day-to-day -day life, which I managed to snap with this camera. But I'm pretty sure that 90% of the people that will be buying this camera will be pretty much amateurs. So I guess this is a good demonstration of what you can expect from this camera, I guess. Okay, before this video does get really long, I did do a heat test with this camera in 6K. I just wanted to see how long it could shoot in 6K and I managed to do about 14 minutes straight. And after that, I switched off the camera when the heat, when the, when the camera actually shut down and I turned it back on. And I think I could only do another two or three minutes after that. So yeah, take it for what it is. And yeah, that's basically it. Oh yeah, if there's one more thing I would love to point out about this camera is the fact that it doesn't really have touch screen for the menus. And I think that this is something that a lot of camera manufacturers actually don't really take seriously. I think by now we should really get cameras that have touch sensitive screens, even for menus. So yeah, I hope Fuji does take this point in. And finally, it wouldn't be Fuji if I didn't mention any film simulations. I do like the film simulations, but generally I did mostly most of my shots in Provia. There is also a brand new film simulation that comes with this camera, which is Real Ace. And I did find it to be quite nice. Anyway, that's just my little sharing with you guys on this camera after using it for about a month. So what are my conclusions after using this camera? Well, I think this camera is such a good all-rounder that it just does a lot of things pretty well. I mean, for its package, I think it's a really good portrait camera if you want to use it for that. I mean, you get really good environmental portraits with this kind of focal length, which is equivalent to a 35 millimeter focal length. And I like the F2 lens, it's really good. All in all, I think that this is such a wonderful package. You know, you've got IBIS on this camera, you've got 40.2 megapixels on this camera, you've got an optical viewfinder. So it is, in my opinion, it is definitely worth the hype. It is one of those cameras that if I had the budget, I would not 
think twice and getting one for myself just as a spare camera just to bring around when I just want to enjoy myself and just enjoy the art of snapping photographs without having to worry about bringing different lenses and different focal lengths and all that sort of stuff so it is one of those cameras that really gets you excited to shoot and if a camera can get you excited to shoot I guess that should really be something that is good you know I mean any camera that gets you excited will ultimately get you snapping more and it will also ultimately get you inspired to shoot better shots and that's honestly what I truly feel how a camera makes you feel does definitely affect the way you shoot anyway that's my quick take on the Fuji X106 I hope you did find this review helpful if you did please don't forget to give me a like comment and subscribe for all my algorithms to work also do check out all the links in the description down below for all the gears that I use to make these videos. All right then, see you guys in the next review or video. Peace.